Section 1.6, Multiplication and Division of Real Numbers. The rule for multiplication says that the product of two numbers with like signs is positive. The product of two numbers with unlike signs is negative. It's really that simple. To multiply numbers with the same signs, you keep the, uh, the, the results positive. If you multiply numbers with different signs, the result is negative. So let's see some examples. Negative 3 times 7. All right, different signs. Product is negative. 3 times 7 is 21, so the product is negative 21. Negative 3 fourths times negative 5 twelfths is positive, and I'll write the positive sign here on purpose, although it's not necessary. 3 fourths times 5 twelfths. Let's see, we would have 3 times 5 over 4 times 12. Thinking of that 12 as a 3 times 4, and removing the common factor of 3, from numerator and denominator, we would have positive 5 sixteenths. And again, we don't need that plus sign, so I could just write 5 sixteenths as the product. Negative 3 elevenths times 11 thirds. A negative times a positive, the product is negative. 3 elevenths times 11 thirds. Well, that's 3 times 11 over 11 times 3. Hey, both of those, all of those factors are, can be removed. Remember, however, that we have a 1 in the numerator and a 1 in the denominator, and so that would give us negative 1 over 1, negative 1. So here are some more complicated examples. When we have multiple factors, we just take them as we see them left to right. Negative 2 times 5 would be negative 10. So we have negative 10 times negative 4 times negative 3. Negative 10 times negative 4 would be positive 40 times negative 3, which is negative 120. Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. All right, well, taking the first pair here, that would be positive 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. All right, 1 times negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Taking the next pair, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So now, what if we have a negative number and we're dealing with exponents and this gets a little tricky sometimes. So here, we have a negative, we have a 3, and we have an exponent of 2. Now look how we have parentheses here. So the way I look at it is the exponent, the 2, what is the first thing that the 2 sees? The 2 sees, in this case, the parentheses. So it is applying to the entire number, negative 3. And so this would mean negative 3 times negative 3. A negative times negative is positive, and 3 times 3 is 9, so we'd have positive 9. Now this one is different. And here, there are no parentheses. The exponent applies only to the 3. So this says negative, and we have a 3 times a 3. 3 times 3 is 9, negative 9.
Similarly here, we have negative 4 in parentheses to the third power. And so this says negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. Negative times a negative is positive, 16. 16 times negative 4 is negative 64. In this example, we have 4 to the third power, and then we change the sign. See the 3, the exponent is only applying to the 4. So this really says negative 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64, so we would have negative 64. Now, it's very important sometimes how, how we say these. I would say this first example as negative 3 squared. Whereas I would call this one the opposite of 3 squared. It might look the same, but the way they are phrased indicates what is being squared. We might also sometimes see this second example as the opposite of the square of 3. And that second phrasing, the opposite of the square of 3, is much more uh, indicative of what is being squared. Now let's look at this last example. I would read this as the opposite of the square of negative 9. And so then we would have here, we would take care of the negative 9 being squared. So this would be opposite, that's from the outside, and then we'd have a negative 9 and a negative 9. Taking care of the multiplication, negative 9 times negative 9 is 81, and so this would be negative 81, right? The negative 9 times negative 9 is 81, and so then we have the opposite of 81 is negative 81. Division. So this symbol, this 1 over a, is a symbol that is used to represent this thing called the reciprocal of a. And we, for division, we don't always have to think of division. We can instead think of division of real numbers. For any real numbers a and b, with b is not a 0, a divided by b is the same as a times the reciprocal of b. All this is saying is that we can treat any division as multiplication by a reciprocal. So this is really not something new. So for example, if we had 10 divided by negative 3, that's the same as 10 times the reciprocal of negative 1 third is negative 3. I think I said that incorrectly in the beginning. The original statement is 10 divided by negative 1 third. We can think of it as 10 times the reciprocal of negative 1 third is negative 3. And 10 times negative 3 is negative 30. Why don't you try these next two on your own? Now would be a good time to pause. Negative 3 fourths divided by negative 6 can be written as negative 3 fourths times negative 1 sixth 
So that would be a positive, and we would have 3 times 1 over 4 times 6. Thinking of that 6 as a 2 times 3, and removing the common factor of 3, we would have 1 eighth. Negative 11 twelfths divided by negative 11 fourths can be written as negative 11 twelfths times negative 4 elevenths. Negative times a negative is positive, and so we would have 11 times 4 over 12 times 11. Thinking of that 4, uh, leaving that 4 alone, actually, and thinking of that 12 as a 3 times 4, and again, we can remove some common factors here. The 11s can be removed, and the 4s can be removed. And remembering that there's a 1 in the numerator now, 1 third. So now we'll talk about how we move between fractions and decimals and vice versa. Write as a decimal 3 fourths. All right, so unless you have this one memorized, what we do here is we use the division process, the long division. We say, how many times does 4 divide into 3? Well, it doesn't. But what we remember is we can bring in the decimal point and bring in as many extra zeros as we wish. 4 divides into 30 7 times, multiplying back and subtracting and bringing in an additional 0 and 4 goes into 25 times exactly. So 3 fourths is equivalent to the decimal number 0 0.75. 4 ninths. 9 divides into 4 0 times, bringing in a decimal and an additional 0. 9 divides into 40 6 times. Excuse me, 9 divides into 40 4 times. 4 times 9 is 36, and subtracting gives us 4. And if we bring in another 0, hey, this looks the same. 9 divides into 40 4 times. Multiplying back and subtracting gives us the same thing. So we're going to get this repeated decimal. And what we would do is write that 4 ninths is the decimal number 0 0.4 with a bar over the first 4. Right, you want the shortest repeat possible. 11 sixteenths. You should try this one on your own. Now would be a good time to pause. All right, so 16 into 11. Sixteen doesn't divide into eleven, but it'll divide into one hundred ten six times or seven times. Let's see. Sixteen times six is ninety-six, and sixteen times seven is one hundred twelve. That's too much, so it'll divide in six times. Ninety-six subtract is fourteen, bringing an additional zero in. 16 goes into 140, I think, 8 times. It would be 128, and subtract is 12, and bringing in a 0. 16 goes into 120 7 times. 112, and subtract gives us an 8, and dropping in one additional 0, 16 divides into 80, five times exactly, so 11 over 16 is 0 0.6875. Alright, so now let's take this in the other direction. How do we go from a decimal to a fraction? The trick to remember is what does 
the decimal mean. So remember that this first decimal place is the tenths place. So 0 0.8 is the same as 8 tenths. Reducing by a factor of 2 gives us 4 fifths, and that would be in lowest terms. The 5 in the second number, 0 0.35, the 5 is in the hundredths place. And so this is the same as 35 over 100. Reducing by a factor of 5 leaves 7 over 20. Why don't you try the last one on your own? All right, so tenths, hundredths, thousandths, the 5 is in the 10 thousandths place. So this is the same as 125 over 10,000. Now, I look at these numbers and say, well, how do I reduce them? I could find prime factorizations, or I could divide out, you know, certain numbers. Let's divide out a 5 and see what happens here. 125 divided by 5 is 25, and let's see, 10,000 divided by 5 is 2,000. Well, I can still divide out a 5 here, right? The numerator divides, is divisible by 5, and the denominator ends in a 0, so it's divisible by 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5, and 2,000 divided by 5 is uh, 400. And again, I can divide out a 5. Five divided by five is one, and four hundred divided by five is eighty, so one eightieth. And you would get the same thing if you broke each of those numbers down to prime factors and removed all the prime factors that were in common. All right, so we'll finish off the section with a little bit of mixed practice, some order of operations. Um, evaluate each of these expressions. Now would be a good time to pause and try these on your own. All right, the first example, 4 minus 7 fourths times 2. Well, I have to remember to do the multiplication before the subtraction. And let me think of that 2 as a 2 over 1. So that would give me 4 subtract 7 times 2 over 4 times 1. I can reduce here, thinking of that 4 as a 2 times 2. So I'd have 4 minus 7 times 2 over 2 times 2 times 1, and removing a common factor of 2. That's 4 minus 7 halves. Now, that 4, I'm going to think of that 4 as a 4 over 1, and I need to build up these fractions so that they have a common denominator. The LCD between 1 and 2 is 2, so building up by a factor of 2 gives me 8 over 2 minus 7 over 2, which is 1 half. three-fourths divided by the quantity four-fifths plus one-half. Well, I have a grouping symbol here, so I know I have to do the addition first. Finding a common denominator for the addition, my LCD here is 10. So multiplying the first by a factor of 2 and the second by a factor of 5. That gives three-fourths divided by eight-tenths plus 5 tenths, and so that's 3 fourths divided by 13 tenths. Division is multiplication by the reciprocal, so that's 3 fourths times 10 thirteenths. 
So that's 3 times 10 over 4 times 13. Thinking of that 10 as a 2 times 5, and that 4 as a 2 times 2, removing the common factor of 2 that's present in both the numerator and denominator, yields 10, I'm sorry, 15, 3 times 5 is 15, over 2 times 13 is 26, so 15 over 26.